Welcome back. Under this course of uh, multiphase flow measurement techniques or measurement techniques for multiphase flow, what we have done, we have already studied about the different measurement techniques available. Okay. And what I am going to do today, I am just going to put the summarize the course, whatever we have learned and whatever I have tried to tell you. And then if any doubt is there, we can have a further discussion. So, what is the whole motive of this course is as I said that multiphase flow reactors are heart of any industry, whether it is uh, pharmaceutical industries, petrochemical industries, petroleum industry, bulk chemical industry or any industry you think about even food industries, any industry you think about multiphase flow reactors will be the heart of that industry and every processes or most of the processes will involve multiphase interactions. Okay. Now, designing of these reactors is still mostly is an art compared to a science and why this is the state because the understanding of multiphase flow reactors even in the current date is not up to the mark where the scientific input or the scientific understanding can be used to design or scale up of these reactors though we have improved a lot, but still there is a long way to cover the long way to go ahead before we come up to a situation where we can say that okay, we can design we can design the multiphase flow reactors based on the science not only the based on the experience. Okay. So, currently it is mostly towards the experience combination of the science and experience, but what is the way forward is to have complete understanding detailed understanding. So, that we can come to a situation where we can based on our understanding we can design the new reactors, we can come up with the new concepts and we can understand the existing reactor in great detail. So, to do that there is a two approach as I discussed earlier in the beginning that you can have do it by uh, CFD's technique or you can say that numerical techniques and you can do the same by the experimental technique. Now, numerical technique though it has several advantages like you do not need to kind of uh, do lot of experiments. Uh, money wise it is very good because you do not need to spend these much money which you will be spend if you do perform the experiment. So, you have to make the experimental setup, you have to kind of uh, stall the techniques which we have discussed, then you have to perform the experiment. So, it is more intensive. Okay. So, it is more involving. Simulation wise it is relatively cheaper because you just need a server and the softwares or kind of uh, your own code and you can do it. But the problem with the numerical technique is that they are not still that much advanced that you can rely on the results of the numerical technique without validating it with the experiments. So, that is the bottleneck because of multiphase flow numerical techniques or CFD techniques is not that much advanced. And why they are not that much advanced because there are several inherent heuristic assumptions which may or may not valid for the case or for the system for which you want to design or you want to understand. And therefore, you can use the numerical techniques to understand the process, but you need a experimental validation. So, multiphase flow measurements or multiphase flow experimental technique measurements or experimental methods are compulsory or you can say that is pretty much required if you want to develop the understanding in multiphase flow reactors. So, the experimental techniques is pretty much needed and you cannot bypass them even if you are doing the numerical simulation, you need experimental measurements to validate those numerical simulation results and then only you can say that or you can have a confidence on the, your numerical predictions. So, numerical measurements in multiphase flow is pretty much required and to do the measurements there are several techniques available. But the problem is as I start uh, say keep on saying this from the beginning that there is no single measurement technique which can give you all the required parameters with similar accuracy at each scale and for all kind of a system. And that is the major bottleneck in multiphase flow that you do not have a single technique available which can solve all your problems, you can which can give the results with the equal accuracy at all the scales which works with the similar accuracy at laboratory, pallet plant and industrial, industrial scale reactors. Further, there is not a single technique available which can be used for all kind of a system like gas solid bed, 
gas liquid bed, liquid solid beds or gas liquid solid beds at all the scales. So these kind of a techniques is not available and that is why still it is a very hot cake where lot of research are going on to develop a new experimental measurement techniques. So, till we are not coming up with a, our dream that there is a one single technique available which is going to solve all our problem, the way ahead is to understand the experimental measurement techniques which we already have which is being used in the literature in detail, try to understand their accuracy, try to understand their limitation and try to understand that where their performance can be utilized. Okay, and what you can do with that system and what you cannot do with that system. So, these di distinction is pretty much important and that is the origin that why we have floated this course which is multiphase flow measurement techniques. So, the idea is this course was to introduce the different techniques uh, which is widely used in the multiphase flow research or academia or some industry and give you a background of each technique, let you understand that what is the advantage of each technique, what is the disadvantage of each technique, what is the working principle of each technique, what kind of a reconstruction algorithm you use to reconstruct the data and what kind of a post processing one can do. So, what I have done in this course, I have tried to divide the techniques actually in two parts, one is volume fraction measurement technique or you can say phase fraction measurement techniques and another is velocity measurement techniques. And why I have done so, because if you want to understand about the multiphase flow reactors, these are two parameters which you need to understand and the variation in these two parameters with the time with the position you need to understand in detail to predict the behavior of any multiphase flow reactors and that two parameters are velocity v and you need how it is changing with the position and how it is changing with the time. And similarly, you need volume fraction or phase fraction epsilon and you need that how it is changing with the position and how it is changing with the time. Once I say position x, I am writing x, but it will be actually epsilon with x, y, z and t if I am going in the Cartesian coordinate and similarly v with x, y, z and t. Type. All this what we need is this and what we need is not the only mean value, we do not want that only the mean how it is changing, we also want that how the fluctuation or is changing with the location, with the time and with the time. Okay. Once we are saying the mean definitely the time will go out of the picture. If you are talking about a time averaged velocity, it will be how the time averaged velocity is changing with the position. Okay. So, we need local information. So, we need v local how it is changing with the y z x y z and t. We need mean information, we need local information and we need fluctuation information for velocity and similarly we need mean with information epsilon how it is changing with the x y z again I am once I am saying mean it is the ensemble average or sorry time average then I am talking about that how the fluctuation is going to change epsilon with x y z and t and how the local phase fraction is going to be changed with x y z and t and you need a technique which can do both the job if possible and if a single technique can do that there will be nothing like that. But what we have found as I said earlier there is no single technique available which can solve the problem both the problem same time with equal accuracy at all the scales for all kind of a system. And therefore, a diverse technique is available uh, different techniques are available which have different capabilities. So, we started with the velocity measurement techniques and we understood about the two different technique in the velocity measurement one is invasive another one is non invasive. As I said earlier that invasive means where you are intruding some probe or something inside the reactor vessel or inside your process vessel to measure some quantity. Now that quantity can be a direct measurement like it can measure velocity directly or it can be an indirect measurement which may measure something else and which can be converted in terms of the velocity. Like we use pitot tube, we use optical fiber probe, we use hot wire anemometer as an intrusive technique to measure the velocity of the flow. 
Now, pitot tube one can say that it is a direct measurement, it gives you delta p which is directly calculated correlated with the velocity. In the hot vinometer, we discuss that what you measure is actually either the current or you measure the, the temperature. So, we operate it in the constant temperature mode, we operate it in the constant current mode, based on that you measure the voltage change because of the change in the resistance or because of the change in the temperature and that voltage change is correlated with the velocity by using the King's law. So, we use E square is A plus B into velocity u raised to the power 0 0.5. We use this correlation King's law and we calculate the velocity, we measure the voltage change and we calculate the velocity. And then we try to understand the limitation and the major limitation was that you nullly consider the heat loss through the wire by convection. Now, other heat losses like radiation, natural conduct, uh, convection and conduction you neglect and therefore, the velocity of the fluid need to be very high generally for velocity more than 1 meter per second only you can use hot wire meter. And then what we have discussed is about the optical fiber probe which is the obvious development once the optical fibers were kind of uh, developed and by using the optical fiber probe what we do we use a two point optical fiber probe or four point optical fiber probe and one fiber probe is emitting the light and based on the reflection principle each phases have a different refractive index. So, their reflection index will be different, their reflection intensity will be different. We identify the phase, we have the say two needles in two needle probe, there is a gas liquid system if I inject this two needle probe optical fiber probe. For the liquid, the intensity of the reflection will be different. So, light intensity recorded on the photo detectors which is connected with these probes will be different and if it is the bubble which comes, what will happen? The in, uh, refractive index of the air is different from the water. The light intensity now recorded on the detectors will be different. You can identify the phase. You can note down that how much time it is taking, the bubble is taking to reach from this needle to this needle. We know delta L, we know delta T that how much time it is going to take. We can calculate the velocity by delta L upon delta T. Okay. So, we can use optical fiber probe and we can measure the velocity of the bubble, we can use four point optical fiber probes to have all the three directional velocity of the bubble or you can also use optical fiber probe to measure the diameter of the bubble. So, all these things is possible, you can even possibly measure the volume fraction. So, we have discussed about the optical fiber probes and we understood the problem with the optical fiber probes is mainly the piercing and that is why the signal which you record on by piercing once the bubble pierce the this needles you do not get an on and off signal. You get some signal which will be of this shape. So, calculating the exact delta t for these two peaks is becomes an issue. And another issue with both optical fiber probe, hot vinometer and pitot tube is you, you are going to change the velocity at the point of measurement itself. Why? Because you are intruding something inside and if I intrude something inside, the change in the velocity will be very high and major point is that velocity change or the dynamic change will take place at the point of measurement itself. So, that is the major disadvantage of any invasive technique for the velocity measurement, same will be true for the volume fraction measurement. Then we go ahead and we discuss about the non-invasive velocity measurement techniques, we discuss about the laser Doppler anemometer, we discuss about the particle image velocimetry, we discuss about the radioactive particle tracking, we discuss about the positron emission particle tracking. Now, the two first two laser Doppler anemometer and particle image velocimetry, they are very accurate, but they are based on the optical measurements and optical range. Now, because of the optical range frequency they are operating, you cannot use these technique for opaque system. Now, once I say opaque, again I keep on telling this that opaque does not mean that only wall need to be opaque, the system itself can be opaque. So, if suppose there is a gas liquid system where gas fraction or bubble fraction is more than 20 to 25 percent the system will turn completely into the opaque system. You cannot able to see anything inside okay, because of the refraction of the light. Okay. So, that is 
called also opaque system or suppose in a gas solid fluidized bed you will not able to see what is happening at the center because solid will reflect back all the light or diffract all the lights. So, these system turn to be opaque and therefore, any discrete phase fraction which is more than 5 percent you cannot use these techniques. Though these techniques are very accurate, their temporal resolution is very high, their spatial resolution is also very high, temporal resolution because very high if you use a very high speed camera for the PIV, their temporal resolution can be increased, but if you use the double pulse uh, laser for the PIV your temporal resolution will not be that good. So, you will not able to get the time resolved velocity profiles. But with the current generation of CMOS camera with high speed camera where you can acquire the data at 4000, 5000, even 10,000 frame per second, you can have a very good temporal resolution in the PIV. But the major disadvantage of both LDA as well as the PIV is that you cannot use it for a discrete phase if the discrete phase volume fraction increases more than 5 to 10 percent. And that is the major limitation because most of the time the multi phase flow reactors we operate in industry is having a very high discrete phase volume fraction ok, because we need higher throughputs. So, we operate for higher gas velocity, we operate for higher solid loading, we operate for higher solid flux if the solid is also in the continuous and that makes the system opaque even if you make the glass wall of the glass the system will be, be opaque by its own. So, that puts the major limitation, but still these techniques are very popular and why because you can have a real time analysis almost you can see how the particles are moving and you can have a very good spatial resolution in PIV if you use a high speed camera you can have a very good temporal resolution too. So, that is the major advantage of the technique. Now, to overcome this limitation that you cannot use it for the higher solid volume fraction, radiation based technique is being developed and that is mainly two technique which is being used and that is positron emission particle tracking and radioactive particle tracking. I am again saying that this is only mainly two, there is other technique like XPTV X-ray particle tracking velocimetry that is also based on the radiation, but what we do in these techniques actually we use the radioactive sources. Now, we know that if the, this is a radioactive source whether it is x ray or gamma ray their penetration power will be very high. And therefore, the major disadvantage whatever was there when you operate in the optical range or optical frequency range will go out and as the gamma ray can penetrate almost anything. So, you can use this radiation based technique for the higher diameter system, for the opaque system even for higher denser system, even the wall is opaque or the system itself is opaque, you can use all this, uh, this techniques. So, that is the major boost in the radiation based technique. In the positron emission particle tracking what we do, we use a positron source and with the inhalation of the positron with the electron, we generate two back to back gamma rays. Now, these two back to back gamma rays are detected and we calculate by using the reconstruction algorithm which I have discussed, the triangulation method we calculate the position of the particle and we get the Lagrangian particle track and from there we calculate the velocity. So, that is the major advantage, the advantage again comes with the gamma ray that you are not limited with the opaqueness of the system. But in positron emission particle tracking as I said that you are, dis you are generating the gamma ray by inhalation and we generate two back to back gamma rays which are 180 degree apart you need a detector system which can detect the simultaneously detect both the uh, gamma rays. If they are not able to do that, you cannot consider that recording as an event and you cannot use it for that measurement. And that makes the whole detector system very complex and the cost of the system goes very high. Further, the problem another problem with the positron emission particle tracking is that because you are generating the gamma rays by inhal inhalation your energy of the gamma ray is fixed and that is 511 keV. So, you cannot use this system this technique for a very big system where the diameter of the column is very high. So, suppose if I want to use positron emission particle tracking in an industrial scale boiler where the diameter may be of several meters you cannot use this technique because your source energy or gamma ray energy is very low and it may get attenuated within the system itself or it may be scattered within the system itself. So, therefore, 
you will not get a gamma rays which is directly coming from the source or you cannot consider those event as a measurement and therefore, you will not able to measure anything. So, that is the major limitation with the positron emission particle tracking. Now, to overcome that radioactive particle trackings are used where we use directly a gamma ray source. Now, because it is a gamma ray source you are directly using you are not generating the gamma rays because of the inhalation the safety wise this is a major concern ok. There you are using a beta source or a positron source which is not that uh, harmful because the beta can be stopped with a small shielding ok. Even a cloth can seal the beta or a glass layer can seal the beta. But once you are using gamma rays directly gamma ray source your inner your safety requirements is uh, kind of increase you need special gadgets a special lead apron, lead goggles, lead uh, gloves you all need all those things you need the survey meter or monitoring meter to monitor the radiation. So, all these things you need to do which makes the technique little bit complicated and you need proper approval before you use this technique. So, that is the major problem in this technique, but the advantage is because you are using the gamma ray source directly there is no limitation of any system diameter. So, if suppose my system diameter is big if I want an industrial scale boiler to be studied I will use the energy gamma rays which energy is very high. So, I will use say somewhere the cobalt as a source where the energy will be in the range of 1200 or 1300 kV. So, we can use those high energy gamma ray source, we can use higher activity of the gamma ray so that the number of counts emitted will be very high. So, the probability of this detection will also be very high. So, we can use all those things that gives lot of flexibility and that makes the radioactive particle tracking technique as a very versatile technique which can be implemented at all the scales. But the problem is your safety requirement that is the first problem. Second problem the temporal resolution the spatial resolution is of these te this technique is not as high as you can get from the LDA or PIV and that makes a limitation that you can get the velocity profile. You can get the velocity profile for any system, but once it comes to a very high temporal resolution very high spatial resolution this technique does not fulfill that requirement. And that limits the application of this technique particularly say if you want accuracy a system where you want to have map of accuracy with say 0 0.01 mm measurement or you want to use this in the micro reactor you cannot use it because the spatial resolution is relatively higher compared to the PIV and LD. So, that limits the application this limitation of this technique is you cannot measure the gas phase you cannot track the gas phase because it is almost impossible to make a solid tracer which can be neutrally buoyant with the gas and therefore, the RPT technique can be used to track the motion of liquid to track the motion of the solid, but you cannot track the motion of the gas. So, the next technique was MRI which is very accurate technique where we use a very high magnetic field source to change the spin of the electrons in which the odd electron number is there. We change the spin, we give the RF frequency, we relax them and then we measure that how much time it is taking back to come back to the original position and from there we calculate the velocity and we also calculate the phase fraction because each phases will have their own magnetic field resistance ok. So, there and therefore, because of that the spin will be different. So, we use that technique that technique is very accurate you are going to the molecular level the spatial resolution is very high temporal resolution is very high, but the problem with the technique is you require a very big magnetic field. So, to scan a 2 inch column you require around 5 tesla magnetic field and that is very very high and therefore, you cannot use this technique for scanning the column which is of higher diameter. So, anything beyond 2 inch or 2.5 inch you cannot scan that column by using the MRI technique because your magnetic field requirement will be very very high and generating that magnetic field will be very difficult and even if you generate it will not be safe to use that magnetic field. So, therefore, the application of this magnetic resonance imaging or MRI in multiphase flow reactor is pretty much limited. You can scan the smaller diameter you can get lot of information, but it cannot be used at all the scales and that limits the application uh, of the MRI. So, 
whatever the velocity measurement technique we have discussed as I keep on telling that there is some limitation of each technique. We have tried to discuss that, we have tried to discuss the measurement methods, the principle, the reconstruction algorithms and all. So, that you can get a clear idea and based on your own application, if you are doing research or if you are working in industry or if you are going to work in an industry, you can recommend some of these techniques depending upon what is the requirement till what label accuracy you need, what is your system. So, that is what we have tried to discuss with the velocity measurement. Then we have done the same thing for volume fraction measurement technique and what we have done there, we have divided the technique again in two parts. One is your invasive technique, another one is non-invasive technique. Again the same invasive means you are intruding some probe inside to measure the volume fraction. In non-invasive you are not doing anything, you are not disturbing the flow. So, definitely the accuracy of non-invasive technique is much higher compared to the invasive technique. Now, under invasive technique what we have done, we have discussed the two technique mainly, one is capistance probe and another one is optical fiber probe. Now, in capistance probe as I said that what we measure is the capistance that with the basic principle is that the capistance property or permittivity of each mid, um, phase is different. And we utilize that concept to measure the conductivity between the two plates. If the we use the two plates, we give some electrical current and we know that depending upon the phase present between these two plates, the conductivity will be different. And that will actually give that how the phase that a particular phase is changing there at that location with the time. So, this gives kind of a volume fraction measurement with the time and it with the at a particular location because this technique is a point measurement technique. So, at a particular location we get, but the problem is if you use two plate conductivity meter then it, it uh, size is very big and therefore, its intrusive nature is very high and it disturb the flow and that has been well proven by several researcher. Therefore, a needle based our capistance probe has been developed where only one needle is being used, the body of the probe is used as a ground electrode and we try to measure that once the needle comes into the contact with which material and that material conductivity. So, in that way we measure the volume fraction with the time, with the position at part, these techniques are point source. So, if you want to measure with the position you have to use several such probes or you have to put these probes at different location at different time. But at the end what is going to happen that these techniques are invasive, it is going to change the flow field. Further we know that the conductivity or permittivity is also the function of many parameters like moisture content, temperature, if the particle breaks, all those parameters will also play a role and which limits the application of this technique because if there will be certain moisture your whole conductivity will be different. Okay. So, that actually limits the application of this technique and then we go to optical fiber probe where we use either the transmission method or back uh, this back scattered method. Now, in the back scattered method it is exactly same as we have done in the velocity measurement. You put a laser light and we know that refractive index of each material is different. So, whatever the intensity recorded on the uh, detecting fiber will be depending upon that what is the material through which the light is being reflected. So, you can find it out that material presence at that location and how that material presence is changing with the time. Now, the only problem with the back scattered is that your measurement domain is not fixed as I discussed that suppose if there is a small amount of bubble present then the light whatever you have sent as a signal from the light emitting fiber can travel longer distance. If you are kind of operating in a very dense system then the light travel distance will be very low. So, getting that where you are measuring the phenomenon is very very difficult in the back scattered mode and therefore, the transmission mode is being developed where two probes are injected like this. One probe is emitting the light and in the probe which is little bit far from that perfectly aligned is receiving the light and we see that how the light is being refracted uh, based on that phase of uh, whatever the phase is present. But the problem here is because you are working on the transmission mode, now you are intruding the two probes, your size of the system increases and that is why the intrusive nature of the system is increases and that is the it means the flow get disturbed in a large way. Second problem is that the alignment becomes very big issue because suppose you are using in a bubble column where the bubble is going and hitting this probe. 
so what will happen if the velocity of the system is very high the alignment can mismatch and the moment the alignment mis will mismatch you will see entirely different results so that is the limitation of these technique and therefore the non invasive technique has been used and mostly non invasive technique is based on the tomographic measurement so what we have done in tomographic measurement we have discussed ionizing measurement non ionizing measurements in ionizing measurements we have discussed about the x ray tomography and gamma ray tomography in non ionizing measurement we have discussed about the electrical capacitance tomography and magnetic resonance imaging now magnetic resonance imaging i have already explained in electrical capacitance tomography it is similar to the capacitance probe we use the same principle that the permittivity of the different phases will be different and instead of now putting the electrode inside the flow we put the electrodes outside uh, we sensitize each electrode one by one we can kind of we put the electrodes all around the wall suppose this is the top view we put the electrode all around the wall we sensitize the electrodes one by one so suppose we first sensitize this electrode we see that how the permittivity is the signal is being recorded on all this detector or all this probe which is now acting as a receiving then we sensitize the other probe and so on we keep on sensitizing the other probes all other electrodes we record the signals and that signal is going to be proportional to the phase present in that and then we can use the algorithm lbp particularly to reconstruct the position the major advantage is that this algorithm can give you a on time measurement or real time measurement so the temporal resolution of this technique is very very high but the problem is the spatial resolution is very low because of the reconstruction algorithm which is being involved which shadow now which is not able to see the difference sharp changes in the phase so suppose there is a bubble and there next to the bubble there is a liquid you will not see the sharp changes what you will do it will shadow down okay so you will see certain films kind of a structure which will be between the bubble and the liquid and that actually limits the spatial resolution of this technique so the temporal resolution is very high but spatial resolution is very low so that actually make the technique of application limits the application of the technique only for the phenomenon where you need a very high temporal resolution like if suppose you want to see how one phase is mixing with the another phase and how that mixing coefficient is changing with the time uh, how the particle is moving uh, kind of if suppose you are operating a, a trickle bed reactor where you are giving the pulsation you are giving the liquid load in the pulsation and you want to see that once you give a pulse how much wetting efficiency you are getting you can use this kind of a probe which will give you a accuracy with temporal accuracy but spatial accuracy will not be that good so what we did we moved towards the uh, ionizing technique we discuss about the gamma ray based or x ray based technique now as we discussed that both the techniques work in the same principle both are transmission tomography principle where one source and one detectors or several source and several detectors are used depending upon what type of beam you are using or what type of projection method you are using and uh, the system of interest will be placed in between we record the attenuation recorded on the detector where the source and detector is outside system of interest is inside you first scan the empty column then you scan the column at in situ condition you record the attenuation recorded on the detector for each projection line and then by using the suitable project this reconstruction algorithm like art algebraic reconstruction technique or filtered bat method you reconstruct the position on this kind of uh, attenuation fact on this uh, coefficients so what you will get you get that how the attenuation coefficient mu is changing with the position and you get that mu distribution or the distribution of the different phases this mu is nothing but the attenuation coefficient of the phase so the phase attenuation coefficient distribution is directly proportional to the phase fraction okay so different this you can calculate and we know that this mu is actually written as mu n epsilon 1 plus mu 2 epsilon 2 for a two phase system and epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 will be equal to 1 so you can get the volume fraction distribution the only problem is spatial resolution for this technique will be very high but the temporal resolution will be very low because you need sufficient time or sufficient statistics at a particular location to say that this projection is the projection which you will get 
okay? or this is the final projection because this is a gamma ray you need there will be noise in the system to come up to increase the signal to noise ratio what you need to do you need to wait for the longer time you have to wait for the sufficient statistics. And therefore, the temporal resolution will be very poor, but the spatial resolution will be very high. And the technique can be used for two phase and three phase system. In the three phase system, what you need to do? You need to put a another source. So, you will have dual source tomography. So, that is the advantage of this technique, but the disadvantage as I said that we will not have a very good temporal resolution. Then we have discussed about the different radiation based technique which is used widely in the industry for the troubleshooting to find the leak in the heat exchanger to find that whether my reactor is working as per my expectation. If suppose there is some internal inside the reactor and that internal is fallen down how you will recognize this all these things you can do with the radio tracer based technique you can measure the liquid label and all those things in opaque system. And uh, you can also do the pipe scanning, you can find the pipe blockage, all these things you can do with the radio tracer techniques which we have discussed. And then finally, we discussed the pressure measurement technique which is very straightforward technique, very widely used technique and can be used to measure the overall volume fraction or you can say the volumetric average volume fraction between the two probes. So, this way we have discussed about each technique advantage, disadvantage and limitation of each technique and I hope you might have enjoyed this course and if there is any problem please feel free to contact me. I will try to resolve your issues and I hope this course has given you a clear idea about the advantage, disadvantage of this tech, uh, different techniques and the capability of each technique. So, you can choose the technique based on your requirement and that was the main objective of this course. So, with this I would like to rest this course for any discussion please feel free to contact me. Thank you.